Hello everybody, it's Sarah here again from SH Millinery doing a bit more hat making. Now today I'm going to make an open crown little cocktail hat. Fairly easy to do. Apologies, I've got dye on my fingernails. My hands look terrible. <laughs> but never mind. Now what we're going to need for this is either some straw, and I've got some flat straw here, millinery straw, um, or some cinema, or a bit of both. Um, you'll also need some Petersham to match whatever you're doing, or a contrast if you want it. You'll also need some brim wire. Now this is sprung steel, and I need this for the brim. And I've also got some brim reed for the crown. You'll also need a needle and thread in a toning colour and some pins. And there might be a few other things and I'll remember them as I go along, but I'll, I'll try and put a list at the end. Now you'll see here I've got a little block, a little um, sort of cocktail block. Now, if you haven't got a block, you don't need to use a block. You could use a tin, a large tin, anything about the size that you want this top to be. And I think this is probably about five inches across, but you can do this on a large scale, make a larger hat with a normal size block and a normal size brim, or you can do it small scale. So I'm going small scale with this. So I'm gonna use this, but if I had a tin that size, I would have used a tin. And also, you'll need something to cut a circle out of, and I'm using a breadboard. How exciting is that? So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut my brim out. And I am using this straw. I have had this for ages. And being flat, it doesn't, it's not very stretchy. You can't sort of manipulate it so it's really only good for flat things so I'm going to put my uh, circle on there and I've brought a bit of chalk and I'm going to mark my circle out on here like that can I see it yep yeah, just about and then I'm going to cut it out Cut out as neatly as you can. Now this doesn't need stiffening. It's it's very stiff, and I'm only using one layer for the brim. Now, depending on what you use, you may need to stiffen it. And if you were going to use cinema, I would suggest using two layers, not just one. So Cut all the way around, like so. Okay. Oh, I'll move that out of the way. And now circle. Um, I did iron this first to, to get it flat, but if you need to iron it again, do that. And now I need to cut my spring steel for the edge. So I'll measure out. what I need. This spring steel is less than a millimetre wide. It's very thin and that's what I like about it because it doesn't add weight to the hat but it keeps it firm. So I'm going to cut it about there. Oh, I would do if my cutters were any good. Be careful when you're cutting sprung steel, it can ping all over the place. Right. And now we're going to be attaching it to our brim. So the easiest way is to put some clips on it if you can, or some pins or whatever. But I'm just going to go straight in and stitch it with an... Uh, an overstitch 
or a blanket stitch, anything like that. I'm using strong thread because you'll need that for this, this uh, thing. So I'm going to thread my needle. Right, so I've sewn my wire all the way around my straw. I cut myself a piece of Petersham roughly the size that I need and I've got a plate here and I've dampened, I've wet the Petersham and now I've got to stretch it so that it will go around my brim. So I'm using a plate because that's the easiest thing to use and I've, I've just picked a plate that's roughly the same size, doesn't have to be exact, it can be a bit smaller or a little bit bigger, but you want to be able to pull and stretch the Petersham all the way around, back to the beginning. There we are. And it's going to sit on that plate until it's dry. Try and get it even Stevens all the way around. So manipulate it on the edge so that you've got a nice even piece of Petersham. Okay, so that's going to go away and dry. Just to say that when I used the breadboard to cut my circle, you can use a plate. You don't have to use a breadboard, just anything that's a circle really. So my Petersham is almost dry and I've wrapped it and stretched it around my base and now I've got to stitch it on. It's up to you whether you hand stitch or whether you machine stitch. For the top of my hat, I'm going to take my plate again. Let me just take that off a second. And I want about halfway on the plate. And I'm going to cut a curve. So a bit of chalk. Like that. Okay. Ooh, I've got threads everywhere. And I'm going to bind this edge again with curved, dampened and curved Petersham, which you saw me just take off that plate. Draw. Right. Oh, I haven't got it quite round and round, long enough. There we are. Try and get it equidistant all the way around and stretch it as you go so that you don't have any bumpy lumpy bits. Okay. put that on perfectly but so we're going to edge that with that now the other side of my crown is going to be the um, cinema that I've chosen and again I want um, a curve not quite halfway round but almost and I started cutting this and realized I hadn't got it very straight so I'm just going to so the other side is going to be a curve as well with my cinema and I'm just going to mark it with my chalk Oop, keep it together good job if you can keep it equal <laughs> I don't know oh, my chalk doesn't show up very well yeah, with this, with this half circle, I want to do the same cinema edge. So what I've done is I've cut a strip of cinema on the cross and I'm going to fold over one edge like so. I'm going 
going to fold over the other edge like so then I'm going to fold it to the middle and then I'm going to iron it flat and I'm also going to iron it into a curve so that it fits around my half circle same fabric bias that's going to go all the way around to there doesn't matter if it's not quite equal at the ends here because I'm going to be chopping that about again in a minute. So that's got to be sewn. That's got to be sewn. And my base has got to be sewn. So I'm off to do that. So all these parts have been stitched down. That one, that one, and the brim. And you can see I used the sewing machine to make life easier. Right, now whatever you're using as your measurement, I'm using this little block, but you might be using a tin of beans, whatever. You don't have to use a block for this. We've now got to have a bit of millinery wire, garden wire, brim reed or whatever the size of, well, <laughs> I love it. it's so springy, the size of what you'll make it to be. So it's gonna get cut off there. What I want to do, I've got my brim raid and I've got my two halves. So this is my, gonna be my brim and these are gonna be the sides of my hat and this is the side I'm going to use first so choose the best looking side yeah right I'm going to put a clip just there now I want a bit of space because I want to be able to fold it up but when I get to the sides I want it a big space so like this And then pull it up that side because I want it to go in at the top so it's a bit like a bishop's mitre. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little catch stitch to hold that so that I can do the other side um, and it would be really handy, handy if I could find my needle which I'm roughly in place. So there we are, it's up higher at the sides and then I'll get a bishop's mitre type effect. And then you decide where this one's going to go. So this one. And then I have a look and see if I'm happy with it, if that's going to be the top of my hat. And I am. I am quite happy with that. Uh, yeah, I am. So, what is going to happen now is I'm going to trim off the massive excess here and then just catch it, catch stitch it all, all together to the brim raid. Okay. Right, so what I've done is I've catch stitched the sides here and here and I've stitched down here as well to keep all this in place. Okay, so then we have our top now. Now what we've got to do is figure out where it's going. So we've got to sort of find the centre. I mean, you don't have to put it central, you could do it offset. 
but we're going to do it centrally. So I'm going to look down uh, like this, flatten it down so I can see what's what. And I'm going to mark it with a bit of chalk. I'm just going to get my trusty tape measure. See if we have equidistant. I probably think we don't, but there we are. Two inches, two inches, two inches. Yeah, I'm quite good at this. <laughs> two inches. So that's going to be the centre. You could, if you were clever, put whatever tin you put on there and draw a circle. Now, the thing is, there's no point in cutting that out and stitching it because this will not fit on a head. It's not big enough. It will balance on a head. So what I'm going to do is put some hat elastic in this. Hole. Hole. And it's going to go through this way we want it all to be hidden so it's got to go through to the inside okay so I'll make some knotties like this work out how long you want your elastic to be This side, now I put a rough knot in just to test the length out, and then I'll put it on my head, and then I'll know where to adjust it to. Let's see, perfect. So that's going to be the length of the elastic. When you've done this as many times as I have, you sort of you sort of know how much of elastic you need, but uh, you will have to work it out. Right, so that's the underside. That's the top side. Now what I've got to do is follow our um, chalk marks. Now if you're having that as your front and that as your back or whatever you need to work that out now you need to decide which which way you're having the hat and i've decided it's going that away now what i've got to do is stitch through the base to the top um so needle thread down. and be careful because you've put that elastic in and you don't want to find you've caught the elastic in your stitching. So be careful as you go round. And what I'm going to do is go from the inside. Like that. Oh, didn't do a big enough knot. Right, so I'm going from the inside. And then down. There we are. See? Back up the and again be careful of your elastic. See normally I put this upside down on my lap, but I can't really show you that, can I? What we're gonna do is we are going to work on our decoration. And I'm going to use some of the Cinema and some of the straw that we were using before and I'm just going to cut off a strip like this square it up a bit and 
kind of strip like that. I'm taking off the salvage on this one. Actually, I wonder if I've got a longer bit. Might have a longer bit. Let's see what I've got left. Oh, yes, I have. I have, I have. Not quite as long as that. Let's see. Roughly. Roughly that. Right, so I've got two long strips of the straw and the cinema that I used before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue a piece of wire down the center. Now I'm going to glue it and then I'm going to stitch it because I don't want to, I need to glue it to one side and then stitch it on, on top. So, I get the glue working. I'm going to put some glue on my wire. No matter if it's too low or whatever. Oh, too much glue, probably. And hold it there. I'm going to have to weight it down or clip it. Just leave that for a minute to um, settle. Right, once it's started to stick, and it's going to stay where I want it. I'm going to put this piece on the top. Like that. And then I'm just going to put a stitch through the wire to keep it all in place. There. I'm going to stitch either side of the wire. I mean, you can do this on the same machine, don't have to um, do it by hand. Right, I've stitched it all down to the wire. I'm just going to trim that edge there. That's annoying. There we go. Right, now I'm going to take a pin or a needle. Pin will do. And I'm going to pick the threads off that are going this way. So these long threads here. Now that's going to take ages to do. So you pick them all off like that. When you've done that colour one, you can do the other colour one. So you, what you're doing is you're pulling off one of the weaves so that you're just stuck with the other ones, okay? I don't want to say okay a lot. It's not good. So I spent I have to say about an hour pulling all the threads off of this so that it looks slightly like a feather and now I'm going to trim it more into a feather shape so I'm going to go from this corner down to the top like that. it's a bit messy this <laughs> As you can see, it's sort of, sort of feather-like, which I thought might be nice on the hat. And because I can do it, twizzle it, make it interesting. So we're going to see how that looks. Now, back to the hat. Now, what I've done is I've sewn this 
to the base. It's not very well sewn at the moment because I sort of tacked it on, but I'm going to go over that with a bit, bit neater. Now, if you don't like the fact that the top is empty, it is an open crown, you can either push a bit of cinema in, which I've done there. You could fill it with flowers. You could do whatever you like with it. But uh, that's how I'm having it at the moment. I've also cut some Petersham ribbon just to go around the edge here. Picture how I finished it off. But anyway, that's how to make a little hat without a hat block. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it fun. I'm sure you can think of other ways to improve it. Um, enjoy!